This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to talk about a crime protection policy and how it protects an insured bank or other institution against fraud in a situation where a fraudster collected over $250,000 by simply sending an email with his account number and routing number different from that of the true recipient and fooled an employee of a company called Valero. In Valero Title Incorporated doing businesses Valero Title Company versus RLI Insurance Company, a February 1, 2023 decision of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, Valero sued its insurer, RLI Insurance Company, that denied Valero's proof of loss claim, which RLI determined was not covered by the fund's transfer endorsement in Valero's crime protection insurance policy. The district court disagreed and granted partial summary judgment to Valero and RLI appealed. Valero purchased a crime protection policy from RLI that included a funds transfer fraud endorsement providing that, quote, we will pay for loss of funds resulting directly from a fraudulent instruction directing financial institution to transfer pay or deliver funds from your transfer account. The relevant definition for, quote, fraudulent instruction is, quote, a written instruction issued by you, which was forged or altered by someone other than you without your knowledge or consent, and which purports to have been issued by you but was in fact fraudulently issued without your knowledge and consent. A Valero employee was discussing a loan payoff transaction over email with the lender's employee when a fraudster posed as the lender's employee and sent the Valero employee fraudulent wiring instructions with a fraudulent routing number because the Valero employee did not recognize that these instructions were fraudulent, she instructed Valero's bank to wire $250,945.31 to the fraudster. When Valero learned of the loss, it submitted a proof of loss claim to RLI, who determined that the loss was not covered by the fraud's funds transfer fraud endorsement. The parties filed cross motions for summary judgment. The only issue before the district court was the interpretation of the insurance policy. The parties stipulated to the amount of attorney's fees and agreed to the dismissal of Valero's remaining extra contractual claims, which the court accepted to make the judgment final and appealable. RLI timely appealed. A genuine issue of material fact exists when the evidence is such that a reasonable jury could return a verdict for the non-moving party. Under Texas law, the interpretation of an insurance policy is a question of law for the court to determine. RLI appealed the district court's interpretation of Valero's insurance policy funds transfer fraud endorsement. The relevant provision of the policy at issue, the funds transfer endorsement, provides for reimbursement of funds lost to certain types and forms of fraud. Quote, we will pay for loss of funds resulting directly from a fraudulent instruction directing the financial institution to transfer, pay, or deliver funds from your transfer account. The endorsement contains also the following relevant definition. Quote, a written instruction issued by you which was forged or altered by someone other than you 
without your knowledge or consent. RLI argued that because the instruction here was issued as it was authorized and approved by Valero, it cannot be, quote, a written instruction issued by you which was forged or altered by someone other than you without your knowledge or consent. The district court held that the only interpretation of Clause A that does not render Clause B meaningless is one in which a written instruction is forged or altered by someone other than the insured without the insured's knowledge or consent prior to being issued by the insured. RLI argued that the district court ignored plausible scenarios on which, under which Clause A would apply without making Clause B redundant. RLI proposed that if Valero had forwarded the exact email forged by the fraudster posing as the lender to Valero's bank instead of issuing its own wiring instructions, Clause A would apply. The instruction Valero issued to its bank included the name of the recipient institution, the routing number, the recipient account numbers, the account name, the payment date, and the total amount of payment. It was the same instruction Valero received from the fraudster posing as the lender. Unknown to Valero, the instruction was not the same as the instruction provided by the lender. It was altered to include different recipient account information. Thus, when Valero issued the instruction to its bank, it was a fraudulent instruction that was forged or altered by someone other than Valero without Valero's knowledge or consent. As the district court held, the only interpretation of Clause A that does not render Clause B many, meaningless is one in which a written instruction is forged or altered by someone other than the insured without the insured's knowledge or consent prior to being issued by the insured. The district court, therefore, correctly applied the interpretation and found that coverage was triggered under the funds transfer endorsement for Valero's claimed loss. In my opinion, insurance contracts must be and are interpreted as written. The insuring agreement provided coverage for frauds perpetrated against an insured, causing the insured to send money to a fraud perpetrator rather than to the lender it had agreed to pay off. Since the language of the policy was clear and unambiguous, it covered the error of the Valero employee who accepted an email instruction to send the money it owed to a fraud perpetrator's account rather than to the account of the lender to whom the money was owed. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zelma.com slash blog, and you can enter a subscription to the blog so that you're advised daily of each blog post, usually five, sometimes six a week. You can also subscribe to the videos of the blog postings on YouTube and on rumble.com. And if you found the videos and the blog posting to be of interest and useful to you, please tell your friends and colleagues so that they can also subscribe. And you might also wish to consider subscribing to my Locals community and to or to my Substack publications where you can see more detailed and serious coverage of insurance and insurance claims matters for a very small fee that is only available to paid subscribers. Thank you for your attention.